Pen finish is coming. Pen finish go. Here you are making a super gloss pen finish on Captain Eddie Castle, and this is brought to you in part by Big Guy Productions. A glass finish that's durable. Yep, that's what I got here. Hi, I'm Captain Eddie Castle in the shop, and I'm going to turn a pen today and put a super glue finish on it by request. The guy said, "How do I put that super shine?" on my pens, like my Freedom Pens. This one's going to go to the sand, that's what they call it. But I'm going to show you how to do this. And working with super glue can be tricky. So what you really want to do is watch. And I get that off if I can, oh, if I can, ow, only find the acetone. You need acetone when you do we're going to start with a couple of blanks I made out of Bobinga. And to put my signature mark on it, I'm going to put three grooves on the cap end. And then I'm going to take my burning wire and burn in three dark marks. That's just my signature. I put on all the pens I turn to go to the sand. The sand, well, that's what the troops referred to as that weird place in the east. Okay, now I burned in my three marks. I want to take 320 and 400 grit paper and polish out to get rid of those burn marks. And just a little bit of buffing is all I need. I've already had most of my sanding done. Now when I start my CA, I'm going to start off using Starbond Medium Thin. That's Medium Thin. Wish it came out looking better. And Tissue Paper or as some people call it, toilet paper. Ooh, can't have any shavings. Those are hurt. Ooh. Uh, use the tissue paper. R here's the thing. A rag never comes to my lathe. Never, ever a rag. Tissue paper. I wad it up. I make sure my hands are dry and clean because super glue reacts to different things different ways. One drop. Watch this. One drop and I move it. If I do more than one drop, it's coming through to the paper. Now, after I've let it dry for about 45 seconds, I'll take my 600 grit Brillo pad. This came from Vince Welsh. And I buff off the, the, the first coat. And I'll add another one and then buff it off. Now, I've added two coats and I've buffed it off. This is the white hut wax. A light coating of the white hut. Now, you can use the dark hard canuba and then again tissue paper what did I say a rag never comes to my lathe and you want to turn up the speed now I'm at about 4,000 rpms and really humming because I want to burn that wax in now that is a burned in like glass finish and it is durable okay we're gonna do this one in real time this is a six minute pen I've got two blanks up there, again they're Bobinga, at least I think they're Bobinga, they could be what's called Mexican Cherry, which is Grandilio, but I'm not sure, somebody gave me a bunch of it. I'm using my roughing gouge, and when I sharpen the roughing gouge, I use my uh, Black Hawk sharpener, and I have it set, I just roll the tip around to make it a little bit kind of dipped on the shoulders not really high and square because I'm going to do a lot of shaping with this gouge. Now you might notice I'm pushing the shavings towards me because I can see the cut better on small items. If I was going to be roughing in a spindle I'd roll my gouge around the other way and throw the shavings on somebody else. I'm going to get it roughed in just bringing down a lot of wood here. Now I could keep going I've got my tool rest a little bit high. I set it for my skew when I started. I'm just trying to make this under five minutes. Don't think I got there, but I'll be close. I just knock some bumps off a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my skew. Now, I honed up the tip of my skew when I got started. And I'll show you how I do that. But I just knock a little bit of corner off and... Now, I want you to watch the skew real close. Look right at the cut. Now, when I get in, I'm going to roll. See this? Did you see it? Watch the twist of the wrist. 
see how the skew went downhill well that engaged the blade that's what makes it cut more like a block plane I'm going to rub the bevel and then twist the handle to make the, the very edge go into the wood. Watch it again. See? When the top comes up, the bottom goes down, and I'm going to engage the blade. I want you to try that a couple of times. It makes it work like a block point. Same thing over here. Now, if I don't need to take much, when I back up, I don't change my wrist or the twist. I just pull it back. And then just a little bit of twist. Now, if you raise too much, you're going to get a catch. And that's what makes people put their skews away. But you can watch the slight twist. Very, very slight twist now. You can see how I'll drive the edge down to the wood. And that gives me a glass cut. Now, what you're looking at is a burnished cut. I'll take a little high spot off here. This is burnished. The cells are closed up. The wood's compressed, the fibers are down, and this is starting to look like a finished product here. Now, the beauty about this finished product is it's only going to take some 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. I'm going to probably do 400 right here. I'm using this strap paper. I got this from Vince Welsh. I got to put my arm underneath so you can see it. Um, they no longer make this available, but any paper will work the same way. Whenever I did pens, I cut one, one and a quarter inch strips out of paper. You waste less paper that way. But this blue flex, flex really lasts a long time. I'll clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to get right into my three marks. Turn my stock on edge to make these three marks. I don't like making the marks just with the wire. You have to set them in a little bit or it skates across and won't set the right burns. Now, puff of smoke, high hole silver, puff of smoke. Come on, one more burn. Watch the little smoke. Pull down, pull down. Yep, this is a little bit heavier wire than I like. I like a really fine dish. I don't do anything about music except how to play the radio. But now I'm going to buff it out. Now, this 600 paper I got has got a little bit of sanding wax on it. You can see it changing the, the color of the wood a little bit. It's not going to hurt. Sanded product. It is now ready for the CA finish. Now the clock is running. This is in real time, guys, gals, wood turners. I pad it up again and get my tool rest out the way. Okay, tell me I'm not supposed to do that when the lathe is running. One drop, push. One drop, push. If I kept the bottle there and kept squeezing, it'd go all the way through and it would stick to my finger. Like that. All the way through. The problem is, if my finger was had a little water or a little uh, wax on it, it burned me like fire. At least I understand that happens. I wouldn't have experienced it myself. Now I'm waiting here. This might be about 15, 20 seconds. Uh, I'm trying to push this along so we can do it real time. There we are. We're hard. We'll get the 600 grit buff. That's, uh, pardon me, an 800 grit. The burgundy is 800. And then we come back. I'm cheap. My wife worries about how much toilet paper I bring out into the shop. Yeah, you can't do that in a coffee can and throw it out the door. Alright, so there it is. I changed my pad around a little bit. Back to it. Another coat. I'm going to wait about another 35-40 seconds. Now, what I'm doing in the shop when this is happening is I'll turn around and get another set of blanks off the, off the, out of the rack or put a kit together or something behind me or something else. I'll fool it around. Now here I'm going to go back. That was the that was the uh, 800. This is the 1000 grit paper. They're all dirty. I can hardly tell the difference. I got written on back. But I buffed a little bit. And then there's my soft hut. Yeah, the white's the soft one. But it does shine nicer. And with that, another piece of tissue paper. Okay. I go through a roll a week. I don't see why the woman's got to get that upset about it. That buffed it off. Now, you can take this off the machine, take it over to your, your Beal buffing pad, and polish it up running with the grain and take the ridges out because you got the right wax in it. This is... Okay, so I'm still cleaning up. Sometimes things happen. 
I guess what I'm telling you is before you start fooling around with super glue, you should have some acetone. <laughs> so, hope this lets you make some really great looking pens. And hope you send them on to our troops in the sand because they're counting on you, Freedom Pen Turner. Yeah. They're going to like this. And oh, the three marks on top? That means it came from Cap Medi. Oh, feel free to use that if you'd like to. Not it came from Captain Eddie, the three marks. I'm making shavings. You take care now. Be safe. By the way, turn a pen today? Turn one for the troops too.